Hey, what's up guys? BC right here, and today we are doing a review of the Die Rise Max. This is going to be a full, in-depth, in-detail video of the Die Rise Max. Now, I hope you like the quality. I upped my camera, I upped my stabilization, I upped the mic, I upped everything. I got a whole new setup. Setup video is coming soon, but I'm getting a new paintball gun tomorrow. Uh, Back is 1.5, in-depth review coming in a couple days. Um, but... I just like to look back at the last six or seven months with the Die Rise Max and review how my experience has been, respond to some of your comments, and talk about them. So yeah, let's get into the video. Alright guys, so we're gonna go over um, a review of what this gun is all about, um, and how I feel about it, and what my opinions are, and what things I think should have been done a little bit better on this gun. Alright guys, so one thing I think that should have been improved is not the feed neck itself, but the thing that you can't take the feed neck off and clean inside. So basically, when you look, I'll show you in a little bit, but once you look down in the breech, you can't clean in depth in the breech where the balls go in. You have to like stick a squeegee in there. It doesn't work. So another feature I wish Die had worked on, the eye pipe is nice. And it's nice that it has this like little squeegee O-tip and you can just squeegee it out one, two, three, and you're good, your eye system's clean. But reaching the eyes, there's no eye covers. So basically to reach the eyes, which I've only done this once, you have to open up, you have to open up this back screw, open up this front screw in here. You have to go into your board, you have to take out all these wires, turn all switches and program the gun. And you have to, you literally have to like spend an hour to get to the eyes. It takes a long time. On all the other modern guns, what do you have to do? Take the little eye cover off, pop the socket out. So that's another complaint I have. Um, I don't have too many complaints about this gun. The trigger's really nice. I tune my trigger so I can go light. Um, a bunch of my friends use three ball burst and ramping, but they can't reach 15 balls a second on semi like I can because the axe trigger is not as nice. Um, I actually prefer this trigger. My friend has a Shocker RSX. I prefer this gun to the shocker because the fact that the shocker's ergonomics is like it's just it's too like teeny. It's like this size reg with like it's it just doesn't work. The ergonomics aren't as good. And the triggers on some guns, they're too light. You shoot too fast. Like for me, I have to press the trigger for it to shoot, not just tap it. If I do that, if I if I do this on some people's guns, just that, that will activate the trigger. On me, I have to go. I have to hit the bottom, so it, it makes it so I can't overshoot someone, but I can definitely still shoot quick, so I love this trigger, it's a nice, nice uh, blade trigger. Uh, regulator, very, very, very reliable. Um, I had an issue where I choked, the, you can easily choke the reg out on this thing, but that's not a common thing, I mean, easy to service, serviced it in 20 minutes with the pro shop guy. Um, and macro line, haven't really touched this much, I mean, I took it out once, but it's kind of hard to take out, so it's annoying. Regulator, tank rig, it's kind of hard to screw in, but I like this on-off ASA more than I like the pops, and I like this because it's just a little knob, and it you can just turn it on and off, but the pops and the Empire levers, uh, it's just not really as nice in my opinion. Board, super easy to see in the hot sun. Um, my gun, actually, doesn't have a battery in it right now, but get into that a little later. Um, so general review um, of this gun, it's it's a very good gun for the price point. Um, I've shot 25 cases of paint through this thing, so 50,000 shots in six months. That's uh, heavy wear and tear, and I haven't even went through a whole tube of this that lube or anything. I, uh, I mean, it's easy to maintain comparatively to some guns. Um, I had a couple comments in my last video saying, you don't know what you're talking about, the Rise Max is reliable. I got to working through the gun and I really broke in the regulator. I did some stuff and some maintenance on it and it's a lot more reliable now. I turn it on and it just goes, but I have a couple issues and the issues I'm going to talk about um, a little bit more in a second. So um, one thing that I think needed improvement in reliability was the regulator is good, but the bolt system. So I'm actually going to show the bolt off in a minute. But the problem with the bolt system is that it's just super, it's a spool valve, so it's not pop. It doesn't really work good in cold weather, but it just, it's, it's just like, it, 
It doesn't work good in cold weather. That's why I was saying it was really reliable. In the middle of January, when there's four feet of snow on the ground, I don't think any gun was gonna work, except for an Empire gun, like an Axe or a Mini. So, I don't know uh, how I was supposed to be expected of that, but yeah, guys, let's get into a little bit of maintenance. Guys, so here's how I take care of the gun. I'm gonna show you what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm not really gonna do an in-depth maintenance because I don't have an hour and a half to sit here and clean out the gun internals. So I'm gonna be doing that maybe sometime. If you guys want that, if you guys want that, put that in the comments below. Um, so yeah, that, that would be pretty sick. So I just take a squeegee and I go against the eye pipe and you just rub it through the eye pipe. So this is where I'm gonna get up close and personal and also make sure that I'm still recording, which is uh, good, I'm still recording. Six minutes. Um, you can see, so you just do that. Um, the autofocus is actually really good on this new DSLR I bought. So, I pipe clean. Then you get your Allen keys. So you get your Allen keys out. You get your fourth inch Allen key, which is the biggest one on my set. And you go on the back. And I already did this in another video, so I'm gonna actually go a lot more into detail on how I do it, because I perfected it. So you just put it in, and then you crank it once, twice, and then pull back. So I'm gonna show that one more time. So you go one, two, and pull back. And sometimes if you can't get it to pull back, you do another twist and then it comes right out. So here's your bolt kit. So I'm gonna, we're gonna maintenance that real quick later. I, just, I cleaned it so it shouldn't have too much stuff on it. I only shot like a half a case of paint through it. You can see, See, there's all oil and lube on there. I don't, I run my squeegee through there, but nothing really to clean. Rag, I'll clean, maintenance. Um, and then, she's a microfiber, so let's get down and let's get on a top view. So now we're ready to do some maintenance. So let's just focus in on the bolt system. So basically what I do with the bolt is you take the bolt, you bring it out all the way out like this. You get the cloth and you pinch. So I take, my top two pinchers and I put them behind the cloth like this and then you go like this you pinch you hold with this and then you pinch so you pinch this blue o-ring and then pull up so then the o-ring comes off and the bowl slide out so I'll show that to you guys one more time um hold on I have to take the bowl so first what I should have said is take this off and then guys you're supposed to take this off the back piece off and then you have this, and then you have the o-ring like uh, this, so you can see it slides through like this. It won't slide through because this o-ring blocks it. So you slide it all the way out. You put your top two fingers behind here. You pull out and up. So you have to watch not to snap or break that o-ring, and then it just pulls right through. So normal day of play, I have a little bit of grease, extra grease on here. So what you do is you just take the towel and you just wipe off all the old grease uh, I haven't had to replace actually any o-rings on this gun yet uh, all of them well actually I had to replace a couple I had to replace the tip o-ring because it just wore down from 50,000 shots on it and I had to replace this o-ring because it was just getting worn down um, but these o-rings are holding up really well really really well especially because I keep them greased I keep them nice and moist so they don't get torn or dried and then this is the only inner o-ring on the gun this inner o-ring right here, this is the only inner o-ring on the gun, so you'll need an o-ring pick to get that out. I'm not taking that out yet. I grease that every time, so you just put your finger in like that. And, I mean, it's not that hard. You just kind of swirl your finger around in there. And you put your hand in the other side. You just wipe off. You wipe this off. You're good. And the other piece, oh yeah, there's one other o inner o-ring, but I don't know. You want to consider this you just put your finger in it you twist it around twist it around and you're good so then with me i take i use slick honey grease um this is definitely the best grease on the market for this gun you take your all right guys so now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be greasing up the o-rings on the bolt so just take some of your slick honey and you put some slick honey um on your bolt just facing out towards, hold on. 
Alright guys, so you put some slick honey out on your uh, gun, you put it right here on this inner o-ring, just do laps on your finger, put, the, put some on this outer o-ring. You really want to keep all your o-rings nice and moist, as moist as possible. So just take a little bit of slick honey, put it on the tippy tip of your finger. I actually use my pinky finger because it's the smallest one. You take it, you put it in the inside, and you just rub it all the way around the hole. And you also take whatever excess lube and you just rub it on the outside. So this piece is done. So you're good. Take this piece, and what I do is I take my middle finger, and you put a little bit of lube on your middle finger, so about that much, and you take your middle finger, and you put it in right on the o-ring seal, so you put it in right on the o-ring seal, and you just go around, and you just make sure this inner o-ring is nice lubed up, because this one's a pain to change, so you want to really make sure you get to these. Um, so take a little bit of lube now, put it on your finger, again, put it on your middle finger, take it and put your middle finger on these two, uh, and rub it around and around and around and around and around, and you just want to coat up the o-ring real nice, so we're done with that one. This is the main part of the bolt, you want to make sure you get this one good. Um, I get a good amount, and I just put this on my pinky finger, and I can apply as needed. So on these two down here, you just take a little dot of lube and you put it and you cover the whole thing because this whole plunger gets touched. Um, and the bottom part you have to cover, this whole thing you need to really cover good in lube because if you don't, then your gun will just dry out and the metal piece will start scraping a little bit. There's scrapes and dings all over this metal piece just from me forgetting to lube it and it's, it's just sliding through super fast. So you should grab more lube, you throw it on this side, you throw it on that side. And you kind of just put a excess amount on here, and then you just spread it out with your hands. You just kind of manhandle it. Um, there's no technique. You just whatever. Um, just really do whatever you want. I mean, now it's all completely coated in this grease stuff. Now your hands are all coated, so you just might as well do this. And then you get your microfiber towel and you wipe off your hands so that's an important step wiping off your hands is a very important thing to do because you don't want excess grease getting on the outside of your gun or any other part so then you grab this o-ring which is the o-ring that needs to be wiped um specifically so you just really rub it in between the towel make sure you get all dirt and oil off of it because this runs through your bolt and makes it clean again so you run um, you put this piece on top of this piece and push it through then you take this o-ring and I kind of put it like this and then I Especially when I'm only doing this one hand because I'm microphoning, but uh, There we go, and you put it over and then you do this As fast as you can so you just push it in and out to make sure there's no friction and It also pushes all of the excess lube onto these o-rings right here So then you grab this o-ring right here with the towel and just do a spin so do a spin around here with the towel. And then on this side, it pushes it, the excess to the front tip and you're good. So now it's properly lubed up. You can hear, you hear the lube going back and forth. So that's good. And then you get this piece and you put this piece on top of. All right, so then you take this and you put it on like this and should feel a little bit of tension, but not too much, just on like this, and you should have the three green O-rings aligned. And you shouldn't be able to pull it back all the way, that's just a thing, because it would fire better. And then you take this piece, and you put it down in, and you're good. And then you do this, and you have your completed. Alright guys, so general maintenance on this gun, it's pretty easy. Um, I open up the... Um, I open up the gun, I take out the battery because you kind of have to take out the battery. The battery dies and then the gun won't turn on. Um, programming mode. I have to take it out of programming mode, but I have it in programming mode. You can see. Battery's not in, but you, so you can't see. But uh, as you guys can see, along the bust on the battery. Um, and another thing, don't use the cheapo battery that comes with this gun. They they give you a monster electric battery. Don't use that one. Don't don't use that. It's really not a high quality battery. 
and it will mess up your internals. So you can see I'm in programming mode. Um, I use um, my first setting, the green setting, is trigger sensitivity. I have my trigger sensitivity set to 18. I have sensitive electric trigger, but uh, not sensitive mechanical trigger, so I don't balance them. I think it came out the best. Um, my dwell I've set to 35, so because um, you don't need factory default 40, you need a little bit less. I have 40, uh, 40 is a little high, so I put uh, 35 because that works better. I'll rate a fire. I maxed out because I have a Spire 3 and it's not going to ball break. I'm telling you, Spire is load insane. Go check out my review. Another perfect in depth review with better tech coming soon. And firing mode. Uh, I do not use PSP nor Millennium, so that's cool. So then to change it out of configuration mode, you just take this little switch right here. This one, the second one, and you put it down. And if you put the first one down, it's called anti ball stick. So if you haven't fired a shot or your first shot, it keeps it from, uh, it bumps the dwell up a little bit from, so it keeps it from shooting to, uh, from the like, velocity change on the first shot. So then I usually take these uh, little screws and I, I don't do any in-depth maintenance. I just grease up the bolt, I wipe it down, and then you take your second to smallest, so um, your second to smallest, so this size, grip frame screws and you take them and you tighten them down and guys I'm doing a Vanquish 1.5 review so if you guys want to see an in-depth review on that that will be coming soon I'm just trying to up the quality of the videos so I'm getting them out coming and right, everyone all right everyone so now we have the gun all set so to turn on the gun you get a blue light it's booting up so you've red so you stick your finger down in the top, and if it hits the bottom, it's all the way. So, it, like, I'm just putting my finger like half an inch, it's still registering on off. And look, if it's on, there's no bolt in this, so I can do that. But you can hear that the solenoid will click. But if it's out, the solenoid will click, and then eyes off. Put this button there, and then you can go on my hand. And if you stick your hand in at the same time, it will go green and flash red at the same time. Eyes off, you'll just destroy paint. You will just chop paint like mad. Keep the eyes on. Um, so a little bit more with maintenance. I just usually take a barrel swab and I go down the breech down here. I usually take out the eye pipe. I just swab it out. It's an Excel barrel made. You just do that. And you're good. Throw this back in here. My computer's attacking back. I just switched filming locations because of the time because uh, of the time that I'm filming this in separate times. So then I just take a microfiber, just wipe it down. Trigger I wipe down. On off I say I turn on. I turn off the towel, wipe the things down, wipe all this down, turn the gun off. Grab the bolt. So you can you can hand tighten it in here. Uh, done a little bit of air will leak. So I usually just out and tighten it down, but I don't have a tire now, it's fine. Just for demonstration purposes, no point in tightening it down further than uh, necessary. And then, uh, probably storage. Store it in a case. I bought an Exalt soft case. I think it was 30 bucks. Uh, little quick plug for the Exalt soft case. Uh, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. That's the sick thing too, I can pan up and down. Um, so I have my Exalt soft case, you can see it's soft, it's got a microfiber lining in here, not going to scratch your gun, nice and soft. On the other side, it's got some very nice uh, barrel, padded barrel casing, so you can see I keep my free kit in here and I'm going to be selling my free kit, if anyone wants to buy it, message me, PM me if you want to buy a free kit selling it because I'm getting a Vanquish 1.5 as I said and this comes with um, that. So let's go back and let's do a final roundup and review. Alright guys, so final thoughts, um, pretty good. I mean, gun's smooth for 325. Um, I'm going to have a little shooting segment just now as you saw in the shooting segment. Um, so that's pretty smooth. I'm shooting with the stock barrel versus the other barrel and you can see, I mean, it's pretty good ergonomics as you can point out and pop out like that. You can pop out like that, that, you can trigger finger, easy, 
the good gun on our FSA. But uh, I'd like to say thank you guys for watching. If you didn't do it, do remember to smack that like button. And I'll see you guys in a little while for a new episode. Peace. Guys, another side note. A um, couple of videos coming out soon. Venture 1.5 review. Uh, DJI Phantom 3 standard review. Osmo mobile review. Rode micro review. Spire 3 review. All these different reviews and product updates are going to be coming out super soon. So I'd like to say, again, thank you guys for watching. If you do, remember to subscribe, like, and turn post notifications on for a post notification shout out. I'd like to say thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, do remember to smack the like button. I'll see you guys sometime later for another video.